I want to place a grace on you that causes those who need what you carry to look for you in the name of Jesus whether it is an anointing or a gift a skill any kind of value that can make you to be of demand and to live a rewarded life I stir up that gift by the grace of God in the name of Jesus Christ let those who have an appreciation for what you carry I compel them to locate you I compel them to engage you and I compel them to reward you in the name of Jesus Christ finally let me pray for your spiritual life and your walk with God at times of political economic turbulence we call them perilous times many believers if they do not manage their their faith process they find out that their spiritual lives begin to decline either because of laxity or discouragement anytime things look like it is not the way you want economically politically and otherwise that is not the time to run away from the things of god it is a time to run closer for the bible declares that the name of the lord is a strong tower it says the righteous man runneth to it and he is saved let me pray for your prayer life let me pray for your word study life let me pray for your appetite for spiritual things it will not go down 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 in the name of jesus this week i release you a sign and a wonder i release you a savior i release you a witness i release you ambassadors of the kingdom in the name of jesus christ May no one despise the anointing and the mantle upon your life. For in Jesus, in the name of Jesus. But for this week, I declare that this week beginning is blessed for you. May the mighty hand of God rest upon you. By next week, you return with tears, some testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because we are on a financial series, I declare by voice of prophecy that from tonight even up until next week let there be strange financial testimonies to the glory of the name of the lord for many of you supernatural debt cancellations for many of you supernatural jobs for some of you monies that were held back may they be released in the name of jesus for some of you may god connect you to the men that he will use to lift you in any case i declare that everyone here returns with a testimony in the name of jesus christ the lord bless you the lord increase you in jesus name i want you to bring those under the anointing as i pray this prayer right now in the name of jesus at the count of three i stretch my hands may fire from heaven rest upon individuals let there be an ignition from the realm of the spirit young and old inside and outside i count three one two three take that fire now Take that fire now. Please bring them out very quickly. Take that fire now. In the name of Jesus. Any church that is not growing. Any man of God who is struggling in ministry. I bring you the power of the Holy Ghost. Here at this miracle service. In the name of Jesus Christ. Intercessory groups. All kinds of platforms. That don't seem to be working. In the name of Jesus. Some of you, your ministries to your families. There are altars that God is raising you to fight and tear down. I decree and declare, young and old, may that power come upon you in the name of Jesus. May that power come upon you in the name of Jesus. May that power come upon you in the name of Jesus. May that power come upon you in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Ministry with evidence ministry with proof go and be a deliverer with fire go and be a deliverer it doesn't matter what yoke has sat upon your destiny and your families i decree and declare right now by the power of the holy ghost let there be that impartation of grace impartation of fire upon you impartation of power upon you
Prophetic ministries, prophetic ministries, prophetic ministries, Kebarakata, multiplied visions, prophetic ministries, particularly prophetic ministries, whatever has beclouded your vision so that you don't see again, so that you don't hear again, receive fire upon your destiny, fire upon your destiny, the hearing ear, the seeing eye. The hearing ear, the seeing eye, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to speak over everyone here. The arrows of bloodshed, the arrows of bloodshed over you and over your loved ones, we command it returns back to hell. no one no one under the sound of my voice will be a victim of bloodshed yeah. number two everybody connected to you by physical descent or by responsibility for your sake i declare that they are supernaturally preserved yeah. in the name of jesus The anointing that fans back a man's prayer altar. The grace for supplication. And prayer. I stretch my hands. It will come on everybody. Oh, but there are a few people that this mantle and this grace. This grace of a watchman. Right now may that anointing fall on you. Take that grace now. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Men and women of prayer, I prophesy to you, arise by the Spirit. There are many women from tonight. That mantle is coming upon you. The mantle that was upon Anna the prophetess, that grants you capacity to pray. Help them please. Take that grace now in the name of Jesus. Arise, arise, Kabakato Sheketekata. Arise in the name of Jesus. It has nothing to do with gender, male or female. If God has raised you, whether you are a Gideon or Deborah, may the power of God come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Halal Shalanda Kaprande Gados Kalia Ekreto Sedegatebelekatosh. All of you in front, I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, let it be a new season for you now. Let it be a new season for you now. Let it be a new season for you now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please let them go back to their seats quickly if they can. Let them go back to their seats. I want to pray a very serious prayer right now. This is a miracle service. And the prayer I'm about to pray is a major prayer. Can I tell you this? Truly, truly, causes are real. Truly, yokes are real. Embargoes are real. Yes, the power of God is there to deliver. But it does not happen automatically this is why you are here i want you to pay attention there are patterns i will never stop praying this prayer there are families under the sound of my voice the same thing everybody faces in the family if it's retrogression it happens to everybody if it's delayed it happens to everybody right now i want to pray at the count of three whether you are inside or outside i like you to shout that name jesus and as you shout the power of the holy ghost will rest marvelously upon you there are spirits that will not let destinies go free great people some of you have traveled abroad and even returned back nothing is changing 
my bible says therefore god has so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name that at the mention of that name every family here having any charm or any cause or any ordinance any fraternity with darkness at the count of three may the fire of the holy ghost land upon that family are you ready to shout at the count of three one two three shout jesus right now yokes causes i break causes generational causes patterns of darkness be destroyed now be destroyed now be destroyed now bring them out be destroyed now in the name of jesus if there is anybody here appointed unto death that there is any manifestation of a curse or any manipulation of the spirit of death that in the realm of the spirit they've concluded over you or your children whether through the elections or any other means i knock on the door of death and i command it to be far from you far from your habitation hallelujah every time there is famine every time there is economic and political turbulence one of the mysteries in the kingdom that preserves god god's people is favor can i speak over your life in the name of jesus the son of the living god you belong to a family that has been marvelously helped by god i pray experience favor i pray for you experience favor experience favor favor from the north favor from the south favor from the east favor from the west there are people the fire upon your altar has gone down it was not like this this was not how you started with god right now i ignite that altar let fresh fire may that altar catch fire now and begin to burn in the name of jesus the bible says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made i want to pray for you the fire of god is coming on this woman i don't know who she is this woman wearing a shiny robe madam look at me i stretch my hands that anointing now take that grace now the name of jesus christ you will never never be the same i ignite you that fire the grace of an intercessor indeed you will pray every spirit that will not let you go i decree and declare be delivered now in the matchless name of jesus please bring them out quickly Help the ushers, whether you are an usher or not, please help them. Hallelujah. We are still praying. We are still praying. The Lord is delivering many, many, many people right now. Every altar that is sitting on anybody's life, yokes that will not let you go. Some of you have dreams. You go to bed in the night and hear this oppression comes right now by the power of the holy spirit may that fire locate you wherever you are hallelujah please pay attention there is a marvelous work that god is doing here there are some of you your oppressions have come in dreams you go to bed in the night and all kinds of dreams going back to secondary schools writing exams that don't finish eating all kinds of things 
fraternizing with dead spirits right now at the count of three makatos kata anyone's destiny under the siege of dreams i declare at the count of three shout jesus again one two three let there be deliverance right now let there be deliverance right now let there be deliverance right now by the power of the holy ghost be broken by the blood of the lamb be broken by the blood of the lamb be broken by the blood of the lamb i pray over your finances in the name of jesus the son of the living god i cry by god that this night may help arise for you from his sanctuary may help arise for you from his sanctuary you will not beg in the name of jesus god will use men god will use systems to make for your supplies number four i decree and declare that even in this season hear me koinonia nothing dies in your hand nothing dies in your hands in the mighty name of jesus there are four of these kinds of destiny help us and i want to share with you very briefly and then we are going to pray number one the first dimension of destiny help us that we will all need in our lives to rise to that position of influence that will help us fulfill our divine mandate they are called divine connectors divine connectors second kings very quickly please chapter five divine connectors who are they ordinary people who do not have the power to change your life but they can connect you to who has the power to change your life they do not have the ability themselves to help you please help us media five from verse one the bible talks about a man called naaman the captain of the syrian army and the bible says he was an honorable man because by him the lord had given deliverance so it was the lord that gave him deliverance yet he could not get healing look at your bible it was not the devil that gave him deliverance in war god gave him deliverance in war and yet the bible says he was a leper he was excelling in one area of his life but there was this question mark in this area of his life number two next verse the bible says the syrians had gone out by company and brought away a captive out of the land of israel a little maid see the description now a little maid suggests gives an idea of a, a small girl who was just a captor from war and the bible says she waited on naaman's wife verse 3 and she said unto her mistress would god my lord wear with the prophet that is in samaria for he would recover him of his leprosy that little girl one day while serving madame she said mommy i've been looking at your husband i know this is not the best for him even though he's a great man there is more he can get into i don't have the power but i know a prophet in samaria let me tell you this it takes the first key that you will need to receive from divine connectors is discernment because they come in forms that may not be easily receptive are we together now it may be a newspaper seller who will just be holding a newspaper with your vacancy and he's just waving it at you and while you are laughing at the slippers he's wearing you are not seeing what god is showing you for the sake of your job he made the traffic light to stop so that you can see discernment this is why only humble people receive from these kinds of people sometimes it can be your little child and he comes to tap you and say daddy pray and you know that he's always throwing trantums but this talk the holy ghost inspired it this one is not just a child talking and that prayer will be what can save catastrophe that is coming in the future when it has to do with divine connectors god can use anybody to speak to you your great man may be foolish for more than half of the year but that very day he will say at least something i'm, I'm respectfully i'm not you know he may be acting and you are always saying oh this foolish man but that day he can say madam uh there's something i want to share with you and that can be the one idea this pain you are going through like this i once worked for another madam 
and there was a doctor that used to come and visit her would you want to see that doctor and that's your miracle for those who do not have discernment you let me tell you according to the law of times and seasons and the law the laws of god the bible says that time and chance happened to them all whether you are born again or not that means someone has come into your life sent by god that if you had the discernment you would have seen what god is saying through them divine connectors you will find them everywhere even in this church who knows whether your neighbor is one are we together The most powerful lesson on faith was taught me by our little children in the ministry. They come and they don't care whether you are tired. They don't care whether you have been preaching. Church starts for them after the grace. They come and stand and they can just say, Daddy, bend. I want to tell you something. And I'm like, ah, somebody is joining the line to see me. And here comes this child, pushes everybody and commands me to bend because he wants to tell me to buy bobo or biscuit. And I'm saying, okay. Do you know why? Since I called myself father, I must pay the price for carrying that name. So when the Bible says we have a father, I go back to God and say, God, I don't know who is on the queue, but I have come not to God. I have come to father. It says when you pray, say Abba, father. It's not just to pronounce the name father. Come with this understanding that you are meeting a giver. hallelujah how many people have been saved because they could listen to supposedly non-entities please i'd like you to leave this assembly today sensitive ready to see and learn from everything and everyone not many people ever rise to become and maximize the fullness of god's expectation for them spiritually and otherwise and there is an explanation for that hallelujah praise the name of the lord so we find occasions where people love jesus sincerely but they find out that their lives are bankrupt of growth always especially spiritually what then is the secret that controls ever increasing growth ever increasing excellence in every area of life we have preachers here men and women of god the fathers of faith here and many of you scattered across and i know that many of you desire to see greater levels of god's grace at work in your life you desire to see increases of all kinds spiritually in membership there is nobody who is not motivated in the presence of results you see jesus himself taught us the power of results when he saw a tree that lured him he came to that tree thinking he would find fruit and not finding fruits the bible says he cursed the tree and he said that no man will eat of you our world today is full of frustrated people frustrated pastors frustrated businessmen frustrated politicians frustrated family people why because it looks like the things that they read in scripture they are not able to walk in the experience of it what exactly is the problem the psalmist cried they cry and he said oh god you are my god he says early will i seek you my soul longs for you my heart thirsts for you as in a dry and weary land where no water is he says to see your power and your glory as i have seen in the sanctuary it is god's desire that gumbe state and every church every business everything represented within this region that it becomes a true reflection of the glory and the power and the grace of god but you see everything physical starts from the realm of the spirit are we together now hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1 says now faith is he calls it the substance of things hoped for he says it is the evidence of things not seen 
then it says for by it the elders obtained a good report verse 3 says through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of god so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are physical or do appear that means the things the material things we see came from a dimension that is spiritual in context whatever goes wrong with your spiritual life will eventually find expression in your finances in your health every other thing that happens in your physical life is a report card to the health of your spirit are you learning already so we desire to see god lift us we desire to see prosperity from every dimension we desire to see the power and the grace of god at work in our lives oh like the prophet let me speak over someone's life by this time tomorrow i don't mean prophetic tomorrow literal chronological tomorrow may a testimony that will surprise you come to you Thank you, Jesus, the mighty God. Wave your hands and just give him thanks. Lord, we bless you. When you come, you come like a mighty God that you are. You come to us because you love us. What is man that thou art mindful of, nor the son of man that thou visitest him? You do this because you have loved us with an everlasting love and even drawn us with your loving kindness thank you and for all those who are out i decree and declare as it has been spoken so let it be for you in the name of jesus christ we establish it by the spirit and we declare that you will stand to testify here can i tell you this before you sit down may i request that you open your mouth in one minute and everything you are tired of that must let you go tonight open your mouth and declare by faith everything that must let you go that this egyptian to see today you will see no more forever we are going to the world shortly but pray Hallelujah. Father, let our lives be testament that you visited us tonight. Move mightily among your people. Let your word come with power in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated if you can. Those in front, God bless you. You may return back to your seats rejoicing. Just help those under the anointing. All those who are in front, you can return back to your seat as many who can. You are delivered, you are set free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now tonight as I teach, please be your brother's keeper. Whether you are an usher or not, if anyone is under the anointing close to you, please do help them so they do not injure themselves you can lift those who are in front here gently back to their seats for those who are unable to rise just leave them until they are fine i command every spirit to leave in the name of jesus we must let them go release them right now out of them finally never to return in the name of jesus christ sometimes you can sit down and just watch two birds playing 
and while you are watching them suddenly you sense that there is an anointing on that scenario and god says i'm about to deliver your business but watch the strategy will not come from a lecture in a university i am using inconsequential animals to show you something do you have the grace and the flexibility to receive the ministry of divine connectors because for many of us until we see people who are great we do not have regard and honor for people you will miss so many things many of the people who will make you great are not great themselves but they know those who are great you must be sensitive while you are looking at the corridors of power be careful the taxi man who carries you can share with you something that will change your life divine connectors ordinary people like that slave girl but they have the power to connect you to great people it is true number two let's hurry up men of access and influence this is the second category of destiny helpers that you need men of access and influence let me assure you in the name of honesty that there are times you do not have access to the gate you will need someone who is already at the gate to speak for you you may never have the luxury of defending yourself you will only need somebody whose credibility has been established to speak for you many people do not know this in business many people do not know this in politics many people do not know this while rising building a track record for yourself sometimes will take your lifetime you will need to convince someone who has a track record and leverage on his integrity and years of sacrifice to say hear ye him hallelujah yes sir there are people today whose businesses can step into superior dimensions there are people today who can be granted access to so many things at ease please do not neglect people of influence their voice has power their names are great they hold keys in their hands and god can use them to open a door for you oh this young man you've been looking for a job okay here is a little note go and give this person just tell them it's for me and that's it that note can work wonders in your hand do you know why it's difficult to receive from great men because many people have not studied the protocol of relating with the great but here the apostles give us the secret behind their life of exploits they literally turned their world upside down and they said the secret is that we refuse anything that sustains the power to distract us we will give ourselves continually to the ministry of prayer and to the ministry of the word the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word now for a very long time and i want you to please pay attention for a very long time in the body of christ for some reason we've had people take the option of the ministry of prayer or the option of the ministry of the word so on one hand we have people who believe in the ministry of prayer as the ultimate recommendation for growth impartation excellence and advancement and then on the other hand we have the people who believe in the power of the word exclusively as the secret to growth and for a very long time in the body of christ we've had these divisions and this contention so we have prayer people as we call it and then we have word people as we call it and here the apostles are correcting us that something is wrong with that understanding that if you are to grow holistically you are not given the liberty to choose the ministry of prayer or the ministry of the word it says we will give ourselves continually to the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word you see one of the dangers that is plaguing the body of Christ today is not necessarily ignorance. I submit to you that by the grace of God, God has helped us to a measure to be able to bring levels of revelation and knowledge in the body of Christ. 
but the challenge largely and the reason why we are not able to become people of stature is because of imbalance negligence of certain dimensions and over emphasis of certain dimensions now please look up there are many women here and um, i know that you cook well in gombe state if i'm right say amen hallelujah now if you are preparing a wonderful meal say you are preparing your soup salt is needed your tomatoes and your vegetables are all needed but they are not all needed at the same degree or to the same degree is that true if you fetch a handful of vegetables you don't put a handful of salt but salt is needed now when your whole food becomes one measure of salt is that food again you have destroyed it but is salt wrong no salt is not wrong but how you applied it is what can destroy that whole soup and do not be offended when he examines you and says i think you need to change this that, or that. three years in a row i had my retreat and i found out that the lowest performing area in my life was my health i said no more i'm going to repent before god and pay attention because this body needs to be used to go to the nations and preach the gospel and then one of the fathers of faith after preaching in a conference one of our fathers of faith drew me to his office and he said my son let me talk to you he said be careful africans kill their prophets watch your health i took that as a voice from god and as i received it as hot as it came i'm transferring it to you please let me today go online healthy uh, healthy 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 eating or healthy diet enter and settle down let the spirit of wisdom help you are we together there are people who are practically dead they are they don't receive you are talking they are sleepy you see all these these things are effects they, they, there is an if you need to prosper in your body number four financial prosperity are you saying that there are four levels now spiritual prosperity mental prosperity bodily prosperity your health and well-being and then financial prosperity so you see that what we have called prosperity is only one of the many dimensions of prosperity what does it mean to prosper financially it means to sustain the ability to totally conquer poverty lack and the negative effects that come with them can i be honest with you it is important for you to be productive to have sufficient financial resources when needed there is timing to prosperity if money comes too late it will destroy you because it's supposed to come when needed to help you solve the problem are we together and then finally the last dimension of prosperity is called relational prosperity the health of your relationships that god blesses you with strategic destiny relationships that give you an opportunity to express love an opportunity to care to connect with people and to live a meaningful and a productive life because by and large when all is said and done it is relationships that will be the last man standing first your relationship with jesus your relationship with family your relationship with useful people around you do not neglect relationship in a bid to pursue money the dynamics of relating with great people is such that you must study you must sustain the adaptability to great people are busy people great people sometimes can be arrogant people great people are people who will inconvenience you beyond your imagination you do not relate with a great man at your terms no so if you if you put your ego on the line is it because you want to give me a job that you are wasting my time oh dear you just finished your interview right there look at elijah and elisha do you know theologically speaking elijah was a temperous man i'm not sure i want to work with that kind of person an angry man just for disrupting his fellowship fire burns you what did elisha endure to receive the double fold adaptation is proof of honor 
Hallelujah. Greatness. You must trust God to have men and women of influence who can be able to speak for you. There are times that your level of growth would not have gotten to that dimension where you can confront the powers that be. You will need to leverage on the sacrifices and the credibility of people. There are many people who receive rewards in the Bible for the sake of others, not for their sake. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Not for his sake. So it's time you begin to pray and say, Father, grant me the grace to honor every great man around me. Because I will not lie, I need their credibility. I need their credibility. There are dimensions I want to get into. Do you know it is amazing that the person you are seeking help from has a friend? And what if his friend likes you? Esther invited her man to the banquet too, even though she was going to kill him. Because even if it's for a short time, her man was still the king's right hand man. Ignoring her man to show that she was out to kill the Jew, she would have died like a chicken. So she said, Everybody is invited. Her man, you too. Come. She honored him to his grave. You must receive grace. Some of you, after this conference right now, you may need to pick up your phone and find one of your uncle or someone that every time you call you are saying uncle so are you trying to say you are not aware there's COVID-19 you see that kind of attitude of entitlement is a very dangerous attitude I'm sorry but I will say it forgive me but it's true you cannot constitute an inconvenience to great people and claim you are a stakeholder in their success because of relationship or bloodline no you must sustain the intelligence auntie this is to appreciate you thank you it's been it's been five years since you blessed me but it's still like yesterday i am grateful thank you very much that they didn't reply does not mean they didn't see it you are not the only one reaching them but something about your consistency and your sincerity will stand out and you may think they are not observing you until the day they send for you they can bring 12 years in one hour and bless you listen let me tell you something great people do not always respond to you but the day they do, oh, you will be glad you stayed. You will be glad you stayed. You are trusting that he will give you a house rent, whereas he has five estates. One day he just looks at you and says, come with your wife. You think he's coming to quarrel you. As soon as you enter, he gives you a key and says, that one at that side, please. Whereas you were trusting God for money to pay rent and keep suffering again. And God just used the man to wipe your tears. Please, I hope you know that I'm not being sarcastic. Listen. Hardship is not a good thing. And as soon as you can get out of it, trust God for grace to get out of it. These are the systems that bring us out. Please do not ignore great people. Whether in this church or anywhere, do not resist that temptation of trivializing their sacrifice. Don't get into that sociological thing of speaking and saying, is it because God has blessed you? Why didn't he bless you too? Because the same Lord is rich unto all. Remember, I told you to pray before I start teaching. I told you to pray. Don't blame me for what this is doing to you. I asked you to pray. We, we, we said we will receive grace from God. This can be a word for someone right now. Why am I praying and yet I'm not rising? I am 50 years. I am 55. And my life is almost an embarrassment. And God says, hear my servant. This is what you have done to everybody. You have called everybody your classmate. You have called everybody your colleague. There is no classmate in greatness. You must submit to greatness and open up yourself to receive. Don't say I was in the university with this. I was this. This person that was not in. He was my younger brother's friend. I agree with you. But it's not profiting you now. Jesus had to submit to John the Baptist even though he was the word of life. John said, no, no, no. I know you. You are a great man. He said, suffer it to be so. Otherwise, my ministry will be destroyed. You are the spiritual voice in town. I can't ignore your relevance and rise. How many preachers will want to excel in this city and come and see someone like our mother and just say, ah, it's just our mother and just and go around and be suffering as if God didn't call you. 
please listen to what i'm telling you how many people want to start a business and they see someone already thriving there and they just ignore him they move around and you know you've heard my story one time i was traveling somewhere and a very great man in this nation was seated he was sitting on my seat and um one of the cabin crew women wanted to walk him and i rebuked her i said don't don't try that this man has achieved more than i've ever achieved in my life don't ever if there is no seat send me anywhere i just want this thing to move and land me wherever i will land the man did not even know i was discussing about him to say thank you but god saw that honor who have you dishonored to your detriment whose greatness have you trivialized as if god just helped them nigerians hear me we are making a big mistake africa hear me we are making a big mistake there are people who have labored and deserve no matter what level they deserve their due honor and dishonoring them to prove a point will cost you supervised by god someone will insult his ceo insult his boss go and sit down and tear him down and yet be praying secretly for the same company you want to have the same corporation you have already killed the door for reproducing that same result men of influence when god taught me this i developed a healthy respect for successful people so the problem is not the revelations listen carefully the problem is not the revelation and the different truths that we have the problem is that it has not been arranged in a methodical order that builds the believer holistically so you find out that we keep doing what is right and yet we never get results so there are people who pray sincerely and yet you find out that I, my the energy i am dissipating in prayer versus the results that follow is not matching then we have people who supposedly study the word of god and criticize people who pray and say it's not about prayer it's just about the word of god and they themselves become frustrated so people in the body of christ today are confused what then controls the results that motivate my christian experience there are sincere men of god who walk in holiness and righteousness sincere people who love god with all their hearts they have applied everything they know to do that makes for growth and makes for excellence and it looks like there's no results every time you have a problem in your life i assure you the problem is not with god let god be true and all men liars so my assignment tonight within the minutes that i have is to bring together these various groups and help you understand that all of you are carrying pieces of the truth and none of you will excel in isolation by the time the ministry of prayer says the ministry of the word you have no business just pray you will be in for a bitter frustration by the time you ignore the ministry of prayer and focus on the ministry of the word and say i'm just studying the word you are still going to get into big error we will give ourselves continually to the ministry of prayer and the word are we learning now this is very powerful that means both ministries are important for the holistic growth and development of the believer now please look up the ministry of the word and prayer was classically revealed in scripture by Jesus Christ himself number one the bible calls him the word of god the logos of god are we together then when we get to mark chapter 4 the bible says when jesus was baptized of the holy ghost listen carefully this is the word now you would think because he was the word he would not need to engage prayer again but as the word 
the moment he encounters he encountered the spirit of god the bible says the holy spirit himself drove him to the wilderness and he was there praying for 40 days no food no water who was praying the word so even the word prayed how could a man limit god yet the bible says it here that the nation of israel limited god a journey of 40 years or 40 days became 40 years because you limited god if god says yes and your mindset says no yes will remain in the realm of the spirit and never manifest are we together the third level of prosperity is called bodily prosperity that means your health and your well-being africans even though we thank god there is there is a gradual health renaissance that is happening in africa right now people are becoming a lot more concerned and thank god for all the people who are doctors here and those who are in the whole wellness industry who are bringing to our consciousness the fact that we have been eating death in the pot for many years the sons of the prophet said there is death in the pot hallelujah most people have eaten themselves to their grave and god is granting us grace there is a, a there is a health revival people are now more conscious they exercise they eat they drink water and they watch what kind of water they drink and all of this and that is very profitable but let me tell you sincerely you want to keep this body as long as possible so that it will help you serve the purposes of god if you deteriorate this body through carelessness you will go to heaven but you may not finish your assignment are we together now a body has thou prepared for me maybe this is a word from god to someone africans interpret prosperity as extravagance in eating and you know generally when you come from a background of deprivation when god blesses you you are on a revenge mission now, I don't mean to insult you, but it's true. So people can sit down and take two bottles of Coca-Cola, half chicken, only you, with three or four wraps of swallow. And once you eat that, we, 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 have, been, we have been given a narrative that that kind of scenario equals prosperity. But it may not be so. The Bible says the leaves are for the healing of the nations. I leave that for you to unravel. But believe me, if you find any doctor who knows about health, make him your friend and ask him honestly for an advice. Am I dying or living? As the word of God, he was engaged in prayer and engaged in fasting. Why would he have to pray again when he was the word of God? The ministry of the word and prayer. Now watch this. Give us mark chapter matthew chapter 4 matthew chapter 4 will we have it projected let me just use my own bible here so we okay the bible says then was jesus we're reading from verse 1 to maybe 6 or so then was jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil verse 2 the bible says when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was hungry now watch carefully we're about to see the unity of the ministry of prayer and the ministry of the word the bible says the tempter came to him who did the tempter come to the man who had been praying and fasting for 40 days when he came to him he said if thou be the son of god command that these stones be made bread verse 4 but jesus answered i just finished praying is that what he said you thought that just because he had prayed for 40 days now satan came to him what he used to drive satan was not his prayer he said it is written haven't prayed for 40 days haven't prayed for 40 nights if he did not know what was written satan would still defeat him as if all of his prayer was a waste listen the secret of his victory he did not say satan leave me alone i just finished praying 
that means his prayer alone did not drive satan in spite of his prayer and fasting the first person he met after prayer you would think that prayer and fasting should drive satan away but the first person he met after prayer and fasting was satan and satan was not shaking under the anointing he came to him and he said you are hungry turn this stone to bread the grace to do the grace to do the grace to do the grace to do are you praying the grace to do shalika parus katebelekata shande malaska de bahasko brandi katala the grace to do all the overflows are you praying following online are you praying i obtain the grace to study this afresh the grace to understand indeed in this season in addition to all that he's given me he grants unto me the power to get well through knowledge through sound exegesis of the truth 